Hi, Men's Community. Welcome back for another video hosted by the Merrimack Institute for New Teacher Support. Today, I'm joined by Julia Nato, um, who's actually right down the hall, but we are um, doing a Zoom socially distanced YouTube episode today. Um, and so here's Julia's bio. So Julia was born and raised in Lowell, Massachusetts and graduated from Lowell High School in 2016. While in high school, she was a part of Upward Bound, um, an education program dedicated to helping first generation students get into college. She's inspired by an English instructor in Upward Bound to pursue her teacher education and English uh, major, and she attended Bridgewater State University. She graduated in December of 2019 with her Bachelor of Arts in English and Secondary Education and a certificate in teaching English to speakers of other languages. She is now studying for her master's in education in higher education at Merrimack College, and she's the graduate fellow in the Placement Advising and Student Support Office, where she works with undergraduate students studying education and human development and human services. So thank you so much for being here. I know it's a busy time with spring advising coming up. We were just talking about that. I can't believe that we're already starting to plan for the spring. It seemed like such a distant, like thing in the summer so we made it um but yeah thank you again for taking the time to be here i'm so appreciative yeah thank you for having me so i will go ahead and share a little presentation that i have with you yeah so please. today i'm going to be talking a little bit about the student teaching experience um with merrimack college and a little bit of advice um a little bit about placement a little bit about how you will be rated throughout this whole process and how that all works. So I will get into a little description of what we will be going over today. So first I'll speak a little bit more about my education experience. I know that Amanda gave a great bio about me, but I'll speak a little bit more about my own experience in education and my path to where I am now at Merrimack. I'll then speak a little bit about your placement for student teaching and how you'll be placed in the school that you'll be teaching in and what your expect expectations there will be. Next, you'll have two people on your side during your student teaching practicum, your supervising practitioner and your program supervisor. I'll speak a little bit on the differences and similarities between them and how they work together to help you be a better teacher. And both your program supervisor and your supervising practitioner will use the CAP, what's called the Candidate Assessment of Performance, to track your progress from the start of your practicum to the end of your practicum. And you'll be really surprised how much you learn and grow through those short months that you'll be student teaching. And lastly, I'll wrap up with some of my student teaching experience and leave you with some words of advice for your own student teaching practicum and how you can be proactive with your own professional development in the job search for when you graduate. So as Amanda mentioned before, I graduated from Bridgewater State in December of 2019 in English and secondary education with a certificate in teaching English to speakers of other languages. Upon graduation, I applied and received my initial license in teaching English grades 5 through 12. For my student teaching semester, I got the really unique opportunity of teaching ninth grade English starting in the fall semester. It was really interesting watching students transition from middle school to high school and really getting that first day of school experience. And if it weren't for doing my practicum in the Andover area, I would have never given Merrimack a thought or think it was an option for myself. And where I am now when the fellowship program to get my master's in higher education with a concentration in student affairs and my fellowship position in the placement advising and student support office, I work mainly with undergraduate students, mainly first year students who are studying education and human development, human services, just like myself when I was an undergrad. And so this is truly a really unique experience for myself. And as you can tell, I really do have an affinity for working with freshmen and working with first year students. And uh, if you are a senior going into your student teaching semester, just look back to who you were as a freshman and how much you've grown academically and personally. And you can see that's why I love, what I love most about my position is watching that transition happen. Now to talk a little bit about the placement process for student teaching, the director of student placement and the pass office where I am will work with you for this whole entire process. You will not be alone for this process. We have a director of field placement for this, for this whole thing. And so you will not be alone through this process and we'll make sure that you get a placement that fits you and the school will accept you with open arms and are very excited to have you. A little bit about the expectations in your placement once you do get your placement and you start attending school is that what is expected of the teachers at the school is what's going to be expected of you as well. For example, when I was at Andover High, um, 
we had to wear lanyards around our neck with an ID badge. So I wore a lanyard around my neck with an ID badge just because that was the expectation of all the teachers in the school. This can also translate into the school day hours. If teachers are expected to be there from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., that's when you'll expect it to be in the school as well, as well as any before school or after school meetings, professional development that they may require, um, you should be attending those as well. Parent-teacher nights are a great example of ways that you will be involved in that process. It's really great to interact with parents and families um, and guardians in that way. I know it can be really scary, but I can promise you the parents are really excited to meet the teachers of their, their children, so they're very excited to meet you, as well as things like lesson planning and unit planning, obviously grading. If you assign it, you grade it. That's usually how teaching works, so you'll be doing the grading if you assign something, um, as well as teaching. Um, that seems really a simple, simple expectation, but what I mean by that a little bit more in depth is that, say, the school, a really common policy a school may have is that you may not be able to show a film for an entire class period. They may want you to break it up. They may want you to put activities in between. So if that's an expectation of your school, you should adapt to that as well um, and adapt your lesson plans and unit plans accordingly. I'll be transitioning a little bit to talk about your supervising practitioner and your program supervisor. So your supervising practitioner, in short, is the experienced classroom teacher you'll be working with the entirety of the semester. That you'll be seeing them every single day they will be sharing their classroom with you and their students with you. You will observe and assist them with their own activities and lessons, as well as you get to create your own activities and lessons and get some helpful feedback and advice from them. Your program supervisor, on the other hand, is not going to be there every single day. They are a representative from Merrimack who is responsible for making sure you're meeting all of the requirements for teacher licensure. Some of the ways that they do this is they will do announced and unannounced observations, um, and they will be using the CAP process to make some three-way meetings in between you, your supervising practitioner, and themselves, so that um, they can determine some ways that you can improve, and also just making sure you're meeting all of the process and guidelines for the CAP program, which I'll speak on a little bit next. So through announced and un unannounced observations, your supervising practitioner and your program supervisor will provide some ratings based on some of the elements that you see right here. They're not all of them, but these are just some examples. So the elements that you will be rated on will be rated in three different areas, the quality, the scope, and the consistency. So for example, if you, your supervising practitioner, and your program supervisor are speaking about your well-structured units and lessons, they will talk about the quality of your lessons, the scope of your lessons and the consistency of your lessons. And within those, they will give you a rating of unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient or exemplary. When you first begin your student teaching, do not be surprised by the amount of needs improvements that you start with. This is just an opportunity for you to grow and learn and really get some of the advice from your supervising practitioner. Um, and I can almost promise you that you will not receive an exemplary status on any of these. Um, and that's just because there are always ways you can improve, um, either through advice from your supervising practitioner, professional development, implying new knowledge. So there are always ways for you to grow. And that's what the needs improvement really need, needs for you in your student teaching process. <laughs> so I will show you, actually, this is my own CAP assessment that I received at the end of my student teaching practicum. Notice all of the needs improvements that are there. Um, there are some proficients in there, which is great, but those needs improvements um, ratings that I was given were actually really great conversation starters for how I could learn more and how I can apply new, um, new practices to my teaching. So the needs improvements are a great starting point for your teaching career because there is obviously never a ceiling for how you can, how much you can learn and how much you can adapt and grow in your teaching process. So needs improvement are great. <laughs> All right, so a little bit about my student teaching experience. So my student teaching experience was obviously very unique because I did it in the fall semester. So I really got that first day of school experience, especially working with ninth graders. So I started my student teaching process simply by observing. I watched how my teacher that I worked with started off the school year 
and how she got to know her students, not only on an academic level and not only just getting to learn all of their names, because there are a lot of students at the beginning of the year, but how she also got to know them on a personal level, starting with the first few days of school. I then started assisting her with some activities in the classroom. I would walk around and do some individual check-ins with students. I would check in with students who were doing group work, make sure that ex uh, instructions were explained clearly and also solve some tech issues that were happening. Those always happen. Um, I slowly started to take over lessons fully and eventually I was leading three sections of ninth grade English by myself. I was able to create my own unit and lesson plans, which was really exciting. I taught two units. I taught a larger unit of Oedipus Rex and I taught a smaller unit of poetry. So I really kind of had some creative um, liberty with that. And I gave copies of all my lessons and unit plans to my supervising practitioner. So not only I could get some really good advice from her of what would work in the classroom and what wouldn't, um, but I was also able to let her decide what lessons she wanted to observe, um, what interested her, what ones she wanted to come in and observe on, just so um, she could not only get the ones she's interested in, but the ones she could give me the most concrete feedback on. Outside of teaching, I also participated in parent-teacher night, which I was petrified of when it first came up, but the parents were really excited to meet me, and some of the students really um, wanted their parents to meet me, which was really exciting. I also attended some football games. I went to some of the weekly professional development sessions at the school held, as well as I went to meetings with some guidance counselors as well. So students of mine who needed some extra support, I went to those meetings as well and participated like any other teacher would, which was really, really exciting and great for my teaching career. At the end of the year, uh, they even threw me a surprise party. I had, you know, snacks and drinks and it was really great. It was so nice. They gave me these cards that I still actually have in my office. They're on the left wall over here. And uh, there were parents and students that even gave me Christmas gifts because it was Christmas season. So that was a really nice wrap up to my student teaching experience. So transitioning into some advice that I could give people going into their own student teaching experiences, this quote from Kurt Vonnegut is really important to me and I love sharing it with students. And what it says is we, look, we have to continually be jumping off cliffs and, cliffs and developing our wings on the way down. And the reason I love sharing this is because growing as a student, as a teacher means taking risks and embracing some of the mistakes and successes that come out of it equally. Teachers are constantly adapting to new styles, new materials, new content, and adapting to the world around them. Like right now with COVID, we're adapting to online ways of learning, hybrid ways of learning. These experiences where you have to adjust and take leaps of faith are not only going to make you a great teacher, but make you really resilient to whatever life has for you outside of being a student. And I also recommend the book that this quote is from, the If This Is a Nice What Is Advice for the Young. This is a great book to read post-graduation. Um, so I really recommend that if you are graduating and you need kind of some, a little bit of a pick-me-up, this is a great book for you to read. So this leads me into some more small pieces of advice for your own student teaching practicum. Student teaching is your time to practice. As I said before, you really need to embrace the successes and failures that you will have equally. I know it can be really, really scary to mess up. And but without those mistakes, there are never ways for you to learn and find more ways that um, more activities and other practices that can work in your classroom. So mistakes are very, very necessary. I'll also say that your relationship with your supervising practitioner can really shape your teaching career. I love using the idea of a Venn diagram. There are ways that you and your teacher that you work with are going to intersect and completely agree on everything that you could ever say, but there are also ways that your teacher that you work with knows a little bit more than you do, and there may be ways that you can teach your supervising practitioner something. So, for example, I actually introduced my supervising practitioner to Quizlet. She had never used it before, so I showed her it's a great tool to use for study skills for students, as well as she was able to introduce me to a lot of literature that I would have never found if it wasn't for meeting her. So it was a really great, mutually beneficial experience. 
Um, I also still talk and meet up with my supervising practitioner all the time. We text each other all the time. Um, so be sure to really keep an open mind for what's in store for you and your supervising practitioner. And lastly, I'll say that any materials that you have made, you know, either in your time at Merrimack in some of your education classes or some of the materials you make during your student teaching, uh, it can be really beneficial to you to organize all of those materials, um, as well as any of the notes that you make, some like post lesson or post unit reflections that you do, um, to keep those notes in there because they can be a really great tool during your job search and job interviews, not only to show everything that you've got in terms of your teaching materials, but also show how you adapt to your students and how you really engage in that reflective practice. <laughs> Lastly, I'll wrap up by plugging some great online tools that Merrimack um, has for you and some Merrimack resources as well. Things like LinkedIn and SchoolSpring can be great resources. LinkedIn and SchoolSpring can be great resources as an online resume and a job search engine for yourself, as well as PortfolioGen can hold any lesson plans or other materials that you've created in your time here at Merrimack and your student teaching so you have them all in one place. The O'Brien and Career Center for Development is always going to be there for you to develop these profiles and your online presence as well as I'll plug mints for Amanda right now as well. The Merrimack Institute for Teacher Support is a great place for you to get a head start on your professional development. And these opportunities not only boost your resume, but they contribute to that continuous learning that I was talking about before and making sure that you're always looking for ways to better your classroom and better your teaching practice. So that ends my presentation. I want to thank Amanda for having me again. Um, and I have some of my contact information there, but if you ever have a time where you're going into your student teaching and you'd love to speak with somebody about their experience, I would love to speak with you, but I know faculty and some people in the past office or other staff would love to direct you to other people to talk to as well, because you are never alone in this process. And that's all I have for you today. So thank you for having me. Oh, that was so awesome. Thank you so much for, you know, all of these pieces of advice and um, even just your own experience. So the few takeaways that I had were, um, so this is one of the first videos that we've had that really target the undergraduate audience. And so this is really awesome. Just if you're a Merrimack student or even just another student at another institution that's about to go through the student teaching process, or if you're a new or developing or seasoned educator watching this, maybe you have a student teacher in your classroom that you could share this video with. So I'm really excited to add this to the channel. It's definitely diversifying it. Um, and just the fact that you're able to show your own um, your own evaluation sheet. I think we talked about this a little bit, but I just, I, I wasn't an education major. I was human development. So I never went through the student teaching process, but if I did, maybe I would, you know, get a little nervous if I had a needs improvement or like, what, like, you know, students who are used to getting A's or something, you might not, it might throw you off a bit, but your explanation was perfect. And it's true. Like, you're, you're, you're never not learning. And it's just, you know, you're always continuing. And that's what we say about MINS too. It's, you know, the acronym stands for, you know, new teacher support, but we see a lot of developed and seasoned teachers coming because there's always something new to learn, improve on, grow. So that was really awesome. Thank you so much. And um, a last thought that I wanted to say was just the pass office at Merrimack College is amazing. I loved going there. Like I said, I was human development, human services. They always have chocolate. They're always there for you. You. I'm sure if you want to schedule a one on one zoom meeting they'll be there for you. So thank you guys for everything that you do. And lastly, just show everybody your shirt because it's only showing the top half but I, I need you to show that. Yes, perfect. I think it's flipped. Oh so it says educating is activism. Yes, thank you. But oh my goodness, this is awesome. Is there anything final that you'd like to say before I end the recording. I think I'll just reiterate that it's really important for you to kind of embrace the mistakes and embrace the successes that you'll have in your student teaching. Embrace those needs improvements. I know they can be really scary. It can be really scary to mess up in front of your students, but it is really a growing experience for you. It's a growing experience for them. I bet if you had a student teacher while you were in school at any point, you remember who they are, and that's going to be the same thing for you. So 
I'll just leave with that. Really embrace the mistakes and the successes you have equally. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This was so fun. And I'll see you in the hallway. All right. Thank you for having me. Bye, Miss Community. See you next time.